crimes are both federal and state? Absolutely. Okay. All crime is commercial. Okay. 27 CFR 7211. The following like crimes, state or federal, are commercial crimes. I've read that statute. I need to go back and read it again. It specifies. No, sir. No, sir, it does not. Read above it. It says, meaning of terms, and then it goes through the masculine and the feminine. And then it says this, the terms includes and including do not exclude things not enumerated which are in the same general class. That's legal speak. As you well know, the terms includes and including do not exclude things not enumerated which are in the same general class. All crime is commercial. Yeah, what exactly does that mean? What what you just what you just stated there? Well, if you if you if you look at, at how includes and including is defined in law, when when a Definition state includes, then that is exclusive of everything else unless otherwise stated. So what it's saying here so is what you're, that you're saying that the word includes either means mutually exclusively including. That's correct. Okay. That's absolutely correct. When you when when you see a definition and it says includes, then the only thing that it includes is what follows the word includes. Now, what this, what this particular CFR says, the terms includes and including do not exclude things not, not enumerated or listed or named, which are in the same general class. It doesn't say specific class. It says general class. That's everything. Do you have general appearance or do you have special appearance? I'm looking up the 27 CFR 211. 27.11. And you have to look at above it at the meaning of terms. Wait a minute. What am I looking at? 27.11 what? 27 CFR 72.11. Okay. 72.11? Yes. Okay. He named their names, 
and he tugged up on my friend's coat till he and his wife stood up, at which point the federal judge dropped the gavel and said, let the record reflect the defendants have appeared in the courtroom. Oh my goodness, what a trick. Well, wouldn't you believe that they were already there? Would that not be your thought process right now? Well, not after I hear this. Well. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now, let me read a little bit from this as well, and then I'll go back to the audio. Okay. This is a little extra on top of what I believe in as well, as far as real parties and interest. But, okay, it says right here in my counterclaim. It says, allegations of law. President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay. And I'm already charging some of these people with felonies. You're welcome. There are two lawfully excusable conditions for seizing, searching, any property or person. A. A warrant of the law. Or, B, first-hand observation of a felony being committed. Udall's harassment by unfounded litigation would cause a deflection of the prosecutor's energies from his public duties and the possibility that he would shade his decisions instead of exercising the independence of judgment required by his public trust. There is no great danger that abuse of power will be fostered by his exemption from civil liability, for the prosecutor is at all times under the wholesome restraint imposed by the risk of being called to account criminally for official misconduct or of being ousted from office on that account. Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 93, 1910 nepotism, an appointment of receiver or trustee, whoever being a judge of any court of the United States appoints as receiver or trustee any person related to such judge by consanguity oh, I'm sorry, consanguinity or affinity within the fourth degree, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than five years or both. Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 93, 1912 Unauthorized fees for inspection of vessels, whoever being an officer, employee, or agent of the United States or any agency thereof, engaged in, in inspection of vessels upon any pretense, okay, that's the key word right there, receives any fee or reward for his services, except what is allowed to him by law, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than six months or both, and shall forfeit his office. Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 93, 1918. Disloyalty and asserting the right to strike against the government. Whoever violates the provision of Section 7311 of Title 5 that an individual may not accept or hold a position in the government of the United States or the government of the District of Columbia if he advocates, number one, advocates the overthrow of our constitutional form of government. Number two, is a member of an organization that he knows advocates the overthrow of our constitutional form of government. Number three, participates in a strike or asserts the right to strike against the government of the United States or the government of the District of Columbia. Or, number four, is a member of an organization of employees of the government of the United States or of individuals employed by the government of the District of Columbia that he knows asserts the right to strike against the government of the United States or the government of the District of Columbia shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year and a day or both. Title 42, Chapter 126, Subchapter, what is that, 4, 5, I'm sorry, 6, 12, 202 and 12202 state immunity. A state shall not be immune under the 11th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States from an action in federal or state court of competent jurisdiction for a violation of this chapter. In any action against a state for a violation of the requirements of this chapter, remedies, including remedies both at law and in equity, are available for such a violation to the same extent as such remedies are available for such a violation in an action against any public or private entity other than a state. So, I gotta stop. It's gonna be 10 minutes. This is getting interesting.